Hello wonderful family, another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. This evening I just want us to dwell a little bit on um, faith again. In this case with a little lesson that I was taught uh, this morning by our Lord. I want you to cast your mind to when our Lord told uh, Jesus, so our Lord told Peter, to go out into the deep, launch out into the deep for a drought and cast your nets, your nets rather. Do you realize that um, when he told him to do that, he did not first and foremost check the salinity of the water, the temperature of the water and the atmosphere, the environment at that particular point in time? the amount of sunlight that was available, the tide that was on at that point in time, the amount of, or the turbidity of the water, the amount of fish, oh, sorry, uh, fish food available there. All he just said was, send your ship out. He didn't bother himself to factor in that this was the wrong time of the day for fish to be caught. The fact that he gave that command it meant that he was setting aside all those processes and protocols that the end result was that fish will be caught in abundance hallelujah fish will be caught in abundance now remember also when he uh, told uh, peter to go and uh, cast his hook and catch the first fish that uh, open the mouth of the first fish he catches and that there will be money in its mouth. Notice that he did not also check what time of day is it. He did not follow the standard processing. Do you do this, then you do that, then you do this, then you do that. All those protocols were breached. The word jumped across all those protocols. The same thing happened when he says, um, Hallelujah. When he said, that the fig tree should not produce again. He didn't go to check um, all the different parameters that will lead to the death of the tree. He just pronounced the word and had confidence in that word that it would do as it was said. The same thing also happens when he says, when you when he gives his command concerning health. You don't. It's not checking. First of all, cell A would. Uh, absorb this amount of sodium or, put, or release that amount of potassium and then the cell membrane will do this will do that and then there will be an electrical coupling here or there and then this cell will get repaired first then that all those protocols are, are breached they they, they they bow to that word to the creative power in the world now i said that to say this that when he gives a command okay before i go there remember jairus jairus daughter based on protocol and processes she had expired she had died jesus set that aside that said that doesn't matter don't think about that don't believe that just keep believing what you have said i'm coming to my, lay my hands on your daughter and she shall recover and be healed and she shall live now i said all that to say this that when the word comes forth do not lean on to your own understanding. Not lean on to your own experience because your experience would want to dictate to you that in the past, this is how it happened. This, will, this must happen first, then that, then that, then that. And it wants to draw your attention to the natural, to the five senses. Now, if you dwell there, you would notice the wind boisterous. You will not move beyond the, the enemy who is Lord in this realm will stir up things around in this realm to occupy your mind, to catch your attention. And once he succeeds in doing that, doubt will come. You have to go above that and stay in the realm or in the arena of faith where you believe what he has said, despite what you are seeing. Yes, uh, the people have not signed the document for the contract. And that wants to put you in a moral state. Look beyond that. He says everything you lay your hands to do will succeed, will prosper. That's what you're looking at, that it prospers. So whatever is happening at this level, 
It shouldn't steal your joy. Overhear and ignore. You get my point? Don't pay attention to that. Don't, don't look at the wind boisterous. If you do, fear will come and you will start sinking. Instead, glorify him. Say, blessed be God. This is prospering. He says, everything I lay my hands to do will prosper. And this is part of what I've laid my hands to do. And because he said it prospers, it has no option but to prosper. So all those bits and pieces will fall into place. Another thing, remember when uh, Peter had seen him walking on the water and it was stormy. Remember, Jesus didn't bother stopping the storm before he walked on that water. He walked on the water even during the storm. Peter now said, if it be thou, Lord, bid me come to thee on the water. Jesus said, come. Jesus didn't say, hold on first. Storm, stop. Uh, wind seize, water be, be calm, and then uh, be solidified so that when Peter steps on you, uh, he doesn't sink. He didn't waste his time with that. He just said, come. And inside that come was the ability for him to walk despite that storm. The problem came when Peter forgot that he had already been walking during the storm and he didn't sink, but now chose to observe that storm around. That's when his experience kicked in. My goodness, a storm. Normally in a stormy they sink. Things that are not buoyant sink based on my experience. So how come I'm, I'm floating? How come I'm buoyed up? It's not right. And then as soon as his mentality kicked in, his spirituality tuned off. He forgot what the Savior had said. And the Savior was still walking in the storm, during the storm. It's because he now looked and paid attention to the things happening around, those natural things, to his five senses, that his spirit man unlatched from that word, come, hallelujah, and he started thinking. The same applies to you and me. If you take your eyes away from what he has said and start looking and observing, that, observing the things happening around, your joy will go, fear will come. It will, it will draw your attention to your previous experiences. And then you start judging God based on your experiences. And everything will crumble for you. Don't do that. Believe Him. Focus only on what He has said. He says, In all thy ways acknowledge Him. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. Everything acknowledge this is what he has said. That's why he said, Hold fast to your profession of faith. For he who promised is faithful. When you say he is faithful, what does a faithful person do? A faithful one doesn't have to be reminded to do something. What he has promised, if he is faithful, he will do it. You don't have to prod him. So if he is faithful, you know that this thing gets will get done. So all you 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 are expected just to stay in a position of rest and gratitude. This thing gets done. Forget what is happening around. Forget what is happening around. As long as he has given that word, he will do it. Because he says he watches over his word to perform it. He's the one that watches it. And as the faithful one, he cannot lie. He's faithful. He will get it done. He will get it done. God bless you. Hallelujah.